Michael has arrived in England and he'll be here in a few hours. Michael, your son? I'm so glad. You don't look very glad. Oh, not for your sake, I mean. You'll love him, you know. He's mad about politics. Head speaker at his school debating society, he tells me. He'll love me? Of course he will. Love me. Hello, Mum! Michael, darling! I wasn't expecting you for hours! Well, I didn't see why I should wait all day for a train. I, I catched a lift down to Reading and you came on from there. No, oh, I'm sorry. Sir John Fletcher is my son, Michael. How do you do, sir? <laughs> How do you do? But I love all this, too. Well, who wouldn't? Lots of people. Michael, for one. Oh, damn, Michael. Oh, Hello, Michael. Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello. Made any nice notes? Yes. <laughs> we are not to be. <laughs> Where are you going, darling? Upstairs. But you've only just come downstairs. I know. Michael, you don't need to go upstairs. I'm going out. Do you have to, dear? Yes, I gotta go to the office, settle a couple of things. Well, don't go on my account. Michael, I can assure you I wouldn't go across the street on your account. I've got it. Well, don't be late for dinner, darling. She reminds me I'd better get a move on myself. Well, you're not going out, are you? No, darling, just upstairs to dress for dinner. That's all. Why? Nothing. Oh, by the way, are either of you doing anything tomorrow night? I'm not. Are you, John? I don't think so. Why? How would you both like to come and see a show with me? What's the name of the show, Michael? Well, it's that thriller at the St. Martin's. Murder in the family. <laughs> now perhaps you see why I invited you round. No, I don't, I'm afraid. I want you to meet my mother and talk to her. Good Lord, no. Please, Lady Fletcher, it's terribly important. Swallow your pride and confront her. Confront her? Yes, reason with her. I I'm sure you can get to see just how wrong this all is. How wrong or what it? What she's doing, of course. But do make sense. What is she doing, for heaven's sake? Living in sin with your husband. <laughs> oh, that really is rather charming. It's so nice to have a chance of meeting you like this, Lady Fletcher, after all this time. Naturally, I've heard so much about you from John. It's been charming. Perhaps you'll drop in on me one day. I can't offer you sherry, I'm afraid. But if I'm lucky, I can give you a little gin. I'd love to. I adore gin. <laughs> Where are you living now, Lady Fletcher? Oh, Grosvenor House. I've got a furnished flat. Oh, how <laughs> delightful. But how extravagant. Don't you find it costs you the earth? Oh, but then I suppose you can manage it all quite easily out of your winnings at horse racing. <laughs> well, I haven't been quite so lucky lately as I used to be. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Brown. My dear. May I say how much I admire that hat? Oh, do you? Our guitar made it for me. He's so clever, don't you think? Quite brilliant. I really must start going to him again. Well, goodbye, then. Diane. Hello, John. What is the meaning of this? It's a most extraordinary coincidence, John, dear. She ran into Michael in the park, and she came back here without any idea in the oh, world. Oh, did she? That isn't true. She only said that to shield me. I rang her up and asked her to come round. Silly! In what chance have I got fighting a man like that on level terms? Wh wh why do you feel you have to fight him? Because I hate him. No, darling. You think he's a fascist. You think he's a crook and a swindler. I believe you even have a faint idea that he's a murderer. You think all sorts of ridiculous things about him. But you don't hate him. I hate him more than anything on earth. I hate him for what he's done to you. He's changed you, so you're no more like my mother than, than any one of a hundred society women I could pick out for you any day of the week in the Dorchester. Olivia, if I tell you that your love for me is the only worthwhile thing that has ever happened to me, and that your leaving me will be the greatest blow that I've ever had to bear, would that make any difference? It would be very nice to hear, darling, but it wouldn't make any difference. If I resigned tomorrow, got my divorce, and asked you to marry me, it would still be you or Michael. Your choice would be the same. Yes. Olivia, you've got to believe me when I say that everything in my life, my home, my money, my work, everything will be meaningless without you. 
I'm not threatening suicide or trying to get your sympathy, but, but if you leave me, it's a plain and simple fact that my life will not be worth living. Go on, darling. Do you mind? However much I cry, it can't make any difference.